When many people imagine a farm in their minds, they think about gently rolling hills that are covered with deep green, lush pastures. Now, pastures like that generally don't just occur on their own for reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video. No, this video is going to be about the first step in converting old, tired, worn out, weedy pastures into that picturesque scene that we all have in our minds. Hi everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm. And in order to get the kind of plants growing that you want in your pastures, you have to start at the bottom, specifically in the dirt. Plants require several different elements, not only to grow and develop, but also to thrive all of which are contained in this little bit of soil that I hold in my hand. Now there's a lot of really good information available online and likely at your local extension office that explains exactly what those elements are and just what it is that they do for the plants. Now from the perspective of the farmer, the most important information that we need in terms of establishing good quality pastures is the soil pH. The soil pH directly affects the ability of the plants to uptake the nutrients that they need in the proper amount. Put simply, the soil pH directly affects the ability of plants to not only access but also uptake the proper amounts of those elements that they need in order to thrive. Often unhealthy pastures are in the condition that they're in simply because there's a pH imbalance, which in turn causes all of those elements to be out of balance as well. And that causes the plants to have either too much or too little exposure to what they need. As for the actual pH level itself, a low pH, which would be 4.6 or lower, indicates acidic soil, while a high pH, which is 7.3 or higher, indicates an alkaline soil. As with many things in life, balance is best. So a good neutral pH is somewhere around 6.5. Of course, that's depending on the type of grasses that you're looking to grow. Now, not all grasses are exactly the same, so you kind of have to shoot for that Goldilocks zone that allows for the greatest health for the greatest number of plants. Now, if your soil pH is out of balance, you're going to need to amend the soil with lime if it's low or acidic, or something like sulfur if it's high or alkaline. However, you won't know exactly what your soil needs until you get a good quality soil test. Now, I know that there are several products out there on the market that you can buy to do the testing yourself at home. However, I believe that the best quality soil test is one that's done by an independent lab that has a good reputation. In my case, that's the lab that's used by the local extension office. And speaking of soil samples, that's what we're going to be doing today. But before I get into showing you the tools that I'm going to be using to collect the soil samples, I want to mention this. It's a good idea to divide your pastures up into areas that are similar. For instance, if you have a pasture that is partially bottomland while also partially hilly, then you want to take samples from the area that's bottomland separate from the areas that are hilly. And that's because those two different types of soil may not require the same kind of amendments. And for better quality sample and test results, you should try to limit your pastures to 20 acres or less. Today, I'm gonna to be taking three samples from areas that are between four and seven acres. I'm gonna be collecting samples using a cordless drill that has a large, worn out boring bit. I've cut the bottom off of a one gallon milk jug. Uh, it has a hole in it where the cap goes. I'm gonna run the drill bit down through that hole and pull the dirt up into the top of this milk jug. Uh, the handle also is pretty handy here. And then I'm going to pour it into a Ziploc bag that I have labeled for my pastures, one, two, and three. Now the lab that I'm using wants about two cups of dry soil. So I'm gonna take about 20 samples in a zigzag pattern across the pasture. I've thrown all of my supplies into a five gallon bucket here. Again, here's the top of the milk jug, the drill, a couple extra batteries, and my Ziploc bags, again, that are numbered one, two, and three for me to put the soil samples in. Whenever I take the sample, I'm gonna kinda rake the grass back, kinda open up a spot here. Now once I get a spot like this cleared, I'm gonna take the top of my milk jug, set it directly on the ground, take the drill, go through the cap area and hopefully not hit a rock. Well, which is exactly what I did. There we go, I got past it. Fortunately the soil is just moist enough that it stays in place and doesn't fall back out of the container. So we're going to call this area pasture one and then we'll just shake the soil down into that bag and move on to our next spot. Now 
And as I said, I'm going to work in a random zigzag pattern, do this about 20 times. So I've got the first pasture sampled. I have a bag full of dirt here, plenty. Uh, there's well more than two cups. And we'll make sure that we mix this up really well. And I went to my local extension office and I picked up uh, this container that they provide. Uh, and you put the sample in there, you do all of your labeling. Oh, dropped it. You do all of your labeling here for identification purposes. So they also give you this little questionnaire to fill out that explains what you're gonna be doing, uh, what, you know, what you're gonna be planning, that kind of thing, and that goes with the sample. And I'll be sure and take care of this stuff just as soon as I get the rest of my samples taken. And just as soon as I get my test results back, I'll post a video where I go over those samples and talk about my plans going forward. So be sure to watch for that video. As always, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.